Yementi is this beautiful country in the Middle East, right under Saudi Arabia. And it has the original Arabs, the Yemeni people. It has, um, it has the kindest, the most hospitable Arab people in, in the Middle East. And as of right now, it, needs some, it, need, it is in need of some repairs and better leadership. but it has the ability to bounce back because we're fighters. Okay. Okay, it's going? It's working? Yeah. Okay. I know, this is okay, whatever. Um, hi everybody. I'm in, oh my God, Midwa. Um, I'm in Tez right now and I'm actually at my auntie Timney's house and it's really hot over here. But I had this place, my mom grew up over here and my dad Got, went to school over here, I think. So far, Yemen is just pretty hot. Like, over here is really hot. Like, humidity hot. And this is what I wear in the house because uh, it's a sign of respect to my cousin Ali, so he doesn't see my hair. The, the scenery is beautiful. It's so green over here in Tez. And, then, and we went in Ib, and, and Sana'a is not green at all. I have not seen any greenery. Here is my mom's land. So... These are our neighbors. My mom's thinking about maybe one day building on here. This is the view that we have. The world the guru. I had always thought we were going to go back to Yemen. So I never thought that we were going to live here for real. So my parents kept on bringing up, like, now we live in America, now we have opportunities now, so forth. And so I grew up, I'm like, when are we going back, though? Day? Talk? No, I don't remember, not in the middle. What day is today? Today is the... July 7th. Today is July 7th. We just came back from Taz, and I think we are in Ib. Yeah, city of Ib. David, right? Went to go see my mom's land, and I think it's pretty cool. I mean, it's up in like the hill side, kind of. Then we went to go buy a lot of other stuff, like for example, Baskin and Robbins ice cream. I don't know, they sell that here. <laughs> it's pretty small. I think it was expensive, but that's okay. Um, we bought some sweets. Is it delicious? Ah. We're gonna try eating. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I should end. How's Yemen so far? Shut up. I hate when people ask we're supposed. That's what we're supposed to. We're supposed to document it as we go because you might change. You might hate it now. It doesn't feel any change. Okay. You don't know. Okay. You know, I, for, when you review the videos, if we had done a lot more vlogs. For sure. For sure. Right now. For sure. Right now. Damn. Yemen has not changed. I mean. In my point of view, I feel like it's... I want to say it got worse. I had no idea we were going to stay there for this long, for 10 years. And my mom, was always, my mom was, would always tell me, you know, we're going there for the best. We're going there for you guys. I'm going <laughs> there to help you guys become the, be the best people you can be. <laughs> Before the year, I think it was 2001, my mom applied for these applications and that was um, only, only women that were educated were eligible. And so you apply, and it's like a lottery system. And if you get picked, you get visas to come to the United States. About a year later, they sent her a letter saying 
for the birthday, you, congratulations. You were picked from the lottery to go to the United States of America. Got on a plane, and we arrived in America on February 14, 2003. We're in Sana'a right now. وحسيتوا ان العالم يعني تغير وان الحياه اللي كانت محتمه والحياه اللي كانت معقده يعني تنفجر تنفرق وتوقع احسن من الاول. We landed in New York. That was the first city we landed in and we stayed at my dad's friend's house. So he had a he had an apartment building. We didn't have any furniture, we didn't have anything. It was just us sleeping on mattresses. And I was like this is not what I'm used to because in Yemen, yeah, my parents weren't like super rich. Yeah, my parents, like, my parents weren't poor either. Oh, dang, girl. You happy? How much did you get? Five thousand a year? That's more than you ever had in your life, huh? Shut up. <laughs> and my dad was thinking, okay, we're gonna live here. We're gonna live off that little store that's right next to the house, and this is how, this is how we're gonna live. And my mom had a different idea. She was like, oh, no, we're not living here. So she decided we have to go, we're not staying here. And first my dad was like, if you're going to leave, you're going to have to leave, and I'm not going to come with you guys. I'm not going to give you anything. I'm not going to give you any money. So my mom had to call her brother and say, is there a way you can help us? يعني أصبر لأجلهم وأحاول أنه ما يكونش فيه انفصال بين الأب والأم على أساس يعيشوا حياة مستقرة برغم المصاعب والظروف والأشياء التي حصلت. Because I saw my mom, she was comfortable now. And so when I was in San Francisco, I saw how my mom was like more comfortable. She was more happy. She, she liked the state we were in. in. She, oh, she didn't like it, of course, because we were staying in one room. But she, she liked it. She felt comfortable that, yeah, there's still a chance for us here. Well, I think we left Yemen for a lot of reasons. First of all, my mom realized like when me and my sister were going to grow up, we're not going to get the chances that we need, that we deserved, because a lot of because we were female. And um, Yemen is a third world country, so everything is, you know, first come, first serve. You know, my children learn the best education, they stay, they become the ones who are going to The the way that the young girls in Yemen didn't see the importance of education as as I see it, like here in America, they didn't even think twice about not attending school. They didn't like care. They just decided to stay home and not do anything. And then when I went to go research that and see why they have that mindset, I realized that no one there really cares, you know, or the people that do care don't really push hard. So the girls, I would ask them like, hey, why aren't you finish, finishing school? Why aren't you going to school? And they, and they would just tell me there's no need for it. There's no use for it. And it's just the mindset that their parents, I guess, had that affected them, so they don't even think about it. To go, you know, talk to my mom about it, she kind of told me, you know, it's, this is the reason why I wanted you guys to come here, because I didn't want you guys to feel that way, to feel that your education isn't important, or to feel that you can't do anything after high school, or that you can't do anything after middle school. And I wanted you to do, I wanted you, I wanted you, I wanted you to know that there was other chances, there was more opportunity, there was more, you know, you can have the dream you want, you can do, the, you can take on like high, you can take on a higher education and become someone, you know, someday. But over there, it's just, it stops. Once you finish high school, once you finish middle school, sometimes middle school is the limits to where they can go and then they stop. They stop even dreaming, which is kind of sad. We are now getting gas. Here, gas is very cheap. See how gas stations are here? There's no need to spend a lot of money on fixing a hole because here's my dad getting there. Oh, so what it be? Hold on. Cow observes this transaction. I feel like out of all my siblings, I was the most nervous one. Because it's probably because all my friends that went back at the age of 16 or 17, they probably were either engaged or married. And I was like, I do not want to go to that. Okay, cut that off. Cut. <laughs> Before, 
before, I don't know, before like uh, the 70s or 60s, almost that time. It was like um, restricted education for uh, girls, even if the girl went to uh, school and like, I don't know, she could like to the fifth grade or sixth grade and, tell, uh, and, get, and then uh, go get married, you know, 1999 specifically. Girls started to go to school and started to go to college and um, work and started driving cars. In the past was if the girl went to school and like wishes to go further like with her education, she will not be respectable. I was looked at a lot by a lot of family members and friends and my parents and they're just you know, they would look at me and like, why, you know, is something wrong with her? Why isn't she engaged? Why isn't she married? And my parents were like, she, you know, she wants education. She chose education, so that's what we're going to go with. And she will have problems getting married, you know? Because here, Yemeni guys, thinks of a woman as, I don't know, as like a wife in the house, just for him and for the kitchen. That's it. And the, the babies, I'm sorry. Don't forget that. That's it. That's her limits. And that's the perfect woman. وهذه هي حياة المرأة اليمنية حياتها دائما يعني بعد الزواج تكون حياة مقفلة وحياة معدمة لأن الزوج لما خاصة لما يخذ المرأة المتعلمة يحاول أنه يكوش عليها بكل الطرق الرجل كذب في اليمن ينهش لحوم النساء وأصبحت المرأة من النوع اللي يعيش تحاول أنه يعني تأخذ حقها بالقوة. Well, in the Quran, it says that women and men are equal, but they don't take that and they don't put it into the rules. So then you, we end up having discussions like these, where why are women getting educated? Before, I always thought like Yemen was being horrible to women. I thought they had no rights because that's all I heard from my mom. She would, she would tell me she was like. In Yemen, you wouldn't necessarily get that right to go to school. Nobody would push you, right? Get married. I mean, that's what your, some people think that's what your life's destiny is to be. A mother, only and only a mother, right? Like it's, it's what they've learned all their life. I know, right, so then. It's like their mother, their mother knows that, oh, my job, or she feels like, oh, my job is to stay home and bear kids, right? And then when her daughters grow, she's going to tell them, your job is to stay home and bear kids. That uh, girl's going to do the same thing, and then it's going to go from generation to generation. Let's understand that, you know, it's not like they chose that. Life is a highway. There goes the mountain. I found me a puddle. I'm going to go swim in it. Oh, no. There's a tip track. <laughs> The one thing that we have to do is change our mindsets, you know? Because a lot of people just think, education's not going to do any good. I feel like if you just let them go get educated, only good things will come out of it. If you, you know, if you look at it a certain way. Of course, people look at it in a negative way. Like, she goes to school, she gets educated, she, all of a sudden she has a free mind, she's going to get crazy, she's going to rebel. Like, that's not even, no, you give them an education. Like, a lot of girls over there are really smart, you know, way smarter than me. And, you know, like, if you give them a chance, they will like, they will soar, they will do so well. <laughs> My mom is super happy for me, she's so excited um, because this is the moment she's been waiting for. Not just for me specifically, but because like my sister's finishing up her first year at UC Davis. That's a big achievement right there. Um, and it's been hard for her since she's the first one to go. The skies are sad because we're leaving our first year here at Davis. So my first year of college was pretty exciting here at UC Davis. I enjoyed a lot of things here. I've met some great people and I'm excited to graduate and I'm excited to have a career and do great things. Everything's just it's in place for everything's gonna go smoothly. I just need to graduate high school and I'll be fine. We watched the seniors all cheer the loudest because they knew they essentially ruled the school. <laughs> we watched the juniors attempt to outshine the seniors and the sophomores getting excited cheer. 
And we all talked about how we can't wait to be in these years. And here we are, June 11, 2015, as a graduating class. But yeah, it's just like, I knew she was really happy. Like, she hugged me the day of. But like when I had the flag of UC Berkeley and we put it on the door so like all the neighbors could see. So I was like, look! And it's like, I was like so happy. And like you could see the like real joy in her eyes because that's what she brought us here for. And so like everything's been at, coming up to this point. We're making it, we're, we're getting there. I feel like my family's made it so far. Um, and there's more good things to come. But it's just, you know, we're, everything's working out. We're going to be just fine. later and I'll film some more. I'm charging some batteries right now so don't about me. I gotta go. See you later. Bye. Oh my god I cannot turn it off. Awkward. Awkward. Where the hell?